that uh, hooligans, I guess. I don't know. Uh, people who don't obey the rule of law just go out and they just riot, right? They don't they don't try to handle things in a civilized manner. So you're going to get pepper sprayed and beaten, and as far as I'm concerned, you should be, um, because there's better ways of doing this where you can hold the government accountable, and that's by taking them to court properly and suing them. And that's a lot of things we're teaching people now, and they have to they have to basically commit acts of such outright fraud and blatant lying to cover up what they're doing that they're exposing themselves for us. And that just happened this morning. I think when you first contacted me here before we got on the radio, you were privy to a bit of a conversation there of a friend of mine who was just in court this morning that was supposed to be for default judgment against the uh, the province of Manitoba. And the judge did everything he could to conspire with the attorneys for the city of Winnipeg, uh, city of Winnipeg police and the province to to basically meddle in his estate and deny him due process of law, deny him remedy, and they just exposed everything you're doing. They exposed everything, and so now we're going to have to take the courts down. And once people understand what's going on, you, you do have remedy. There's always remedy. There's always a higher authority to go to, uh, but you have to express your injuries. You can't write a letter to your member of parliament and complain that you were mistreated, okay? you got to swear out an affidavit of what the police did to you, and you have to serve it on them and let them not reply to it. And then you have to sue them civilly in Manitoba. It's, it's Queen's Bench. In Ontario, it seems to be Superior Court. Where, wherever your Superior Court is, in the province you live, in the, in the United States where you live, anywhere in the world where you live, especially Commonwealth nations that are technically supposed, allegedly under what they call the crown, you have recourse and remedy. And people bitch to me all the time. Well, you know what? Oh, like I, I, you know, they're, they're 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 abusing my rights, and I can't do anything about it. But all you have to do is go and read, read the rules of Court of Queen's Bench. Read the rules. Go read a book. Read the Criminal Code of Canada. Go buy a copy. It's twenty bucks. And instead of instead of watching TV that night for eight hours, read, read a book. I canceled my cable fourteen years ago. I have not watched a TV show except at a friend's house to 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 be reminded of how. Stupid it is! I have not watched a television program. It, it's 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 yeah. it's unbelievable how mind numbing it is. Read a book. Go read the criminal code to understand how their courts work. The court process is right there. If you can't read and you haven't tried taking somebody to court, and you want to just hire a lawyer thinking he's going to defend your rights, then you're then you're you're going to be a slave your entire life. Yeah, now some people are, like, Philly Boy in the chat here saying people are lazy, and it's very, very true. We need to be motivated, and, well, not, I mean, not necessarily me personally, but, you know, we do. We need some kind of motivation, um, and a lot of human beings, as I've said, have to be backed into a corner before they come out swinging. Um, th that's why we have to kind of set that stuff aside and go, okay, that's fine, and yes, we do, but now we have information that we can spread, so we, saw how we individually have to start living this in order to have it spread it's the hundred monkey syndrome that's that's the way that it works now have you uh won a case yet um well there's different definitions of win there's uh there's there's other processes that uh that i i'm personally speaking and even up until recently i was never a big believer in queen's bench for the simple fact that yes your remedy is there but you're also relying on the fact that you're assuming a public servant called a judge is going to do the right thing and that almost never happens they're going to defend the government tooth and nail period even when the government hasn't defended itself themselves the judge is going to try to step in and defend the government for them which is a complete violation of due process of law um i don't know how many people have watched a lot of the winston Shrout stuff that's out there to do with commercial liens and remedy um i learned all that stuff years ago and now i've applied a lot of it and the problem is there's no you're not taught really what you can do with these commercial liens what they uh, what the what the what they really are where to enforce them the fact that they're only a step in a bigger process um, the, one of the, the, the beautiful things that I think Shroud even says himself personally is that we create our own remedy create your remedy I mean we're the sovereigns here right we're yeah. the ones that have to create our own remedy and so um, the, 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 the private banking system, the private international banking system is one great, great tool that's out there that can be used because you got to remember, governments have to bank somewhere. And banks don't care who you are. They want your deposit. They want your business. 
They will take yeah, a claim sure. against the government and they will monetize it. They don't care. They just want your deposit. This is where you start to use the system's greed against themselves. And so that's one of the way, the one of the things I'm pursuing right now that I'm debating whether or not I'm even going to make an informational uh, video on that down the road. Because uh, at some point you're going to start to piss off the wrong people. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, and we discussed that. You have to keep yourself safe to some extent as well because y you give them the, a bit of the, of get them on their road and then they ha kind of have, you can't lead them through the whole thing because then no, you're putting you, yourself at risk. That's why I've decided I'm going to be teaching people basic concepts and it's up to them from there to go out and to do the legwork, to learn, to research, to create their own remedy, to dismantle the banking system, read the acts, uh, read, you know, United Nations uh, conventions on international bills of exchange, read all this stuff, read it. Don't email yeah. me and ask me to solve your problems for you. If uh, the, the, the concepts are here for you, and once you understand your role in things, that you are the principal creditor of everything that's going on in the world, nothing could exist without your signature and without your equity. Nothing. That puts well, you in and there's an. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I, go ahead. That's pretty much what there's that was. A, there's an opt-out on everything you sign. Of course there is. You don't have to agree to any of their terms no they'll they'll try to force you i mean uh I, I i can't remember if i even covered in some of the videos about when uh when the police come to arrest you claiming to have a warrant and stuff like that right but the only way they can have a warrant is to have an original charge how many people have ever asked to see the original charge yeah well, well that's like something nobody. I understand. No, that's something I understand more so. Um, just a quick example. My husband was at work. John was at work. And um, just quickly to let everybody know, because I'll forget if I don't do it right now. You're listening to <laughs> FreeTalkRadio.com. This is Lifting the Veil. I'm your host, Carrie Lee, and I'm here today live with Sovereign Dean Clifford or Dean of the Clifford family. Do you, do you care about that kind of stuff? I don't care about that. The name is irrelevant. Once you establish or establish your identity, and your identity is your role, it's your title, and remove presumptions that you're something else, you can use any name you want. I, I just, Dean Clifford, that's my name. The problem is when you're talking with police and you say your name verbally, they presume you automatically that your last name is capitalized and your first name is not because they can only deal with other public servants. Police are like an internal security force. For the government. Right. And if you're even speaking okay, to so them, you must be something yeah. they have jurisdiction over. So you got to remove that. But uh, yeah, now, the name is irrelevant. The title. It's the title. It's your position. It's what you what you decide to do with it kind of type yeah. thing. Now, my, uh, John was at work and he, there. The, I guess there was this uh, cycler coming by and the cops turned in and threw him up against the hood of the car and threw the cuffs on him. Well, John, this was like the next day after our chat, you and John and I had had our conversation, and John's standing at the end of the driveway at work on, on break, and he's yelling, you are not your name, you are the president and CEO of said numbered corporation, don't give them anything, <laughs> and everybody around work's looking at him going, what the fuck are you talking about, you fucking weirdo? <laughs> And he just kept on rifling off stuff and rifling off stuff. And finally, the cop looked over and grabbed the guy by his head and chucked him in the car and looked at John and just shook his head, eh? And he was like, well, what? <laughs> what did I do? You know what? Uh, that, anyway. It's one of the things I'd like to talk about, maybe even in upcoming stuff there, that uh, if we're going to be posting more stuff online, we probably will be. Or I, I, a lot of people have to understand, I guess, too, is that uh, Free Manitoba is not my site. It's the website of one of the guys or a group of guys that show up at, 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 the, at, the, um, at the little tutorials that I'm giving. They asked to post it on there. Originally, these videos were only supposed to be for internal use, for a couple of our members to take home just to, just to, to re-watch so they could get some of the stuff you know, through their head after watching it a couple more times. And then they said, well, hey, how about we just throw this up on the Internet? And I was like, hey, why not? Okay. And so that's why the poor quality of the videos, it's not like this was ever supposed to be something published on YouTube, and then now here we are three weeks later, you know, there's 30, we're going to be pushing 31 or 30, no, we're going to be beyond 32,000 views by the end of the day today. And these are just terrible quality videos of one of our own presentations for, for 10 of our members of our own group here in Manitoba. So 
but I will be getting, uh, if I don't get my own website up very soon, I think all I'm going to do is record just some of my own stuff as well, where I'm just kind of speaking before the camera myself here at the office and posting it on my own YouTube channel just for to, to cover a lot of this stuff. But a lot of the peop- things people have to realize is there's no reason, if you, if you even look in the Criminal Code of Canada at the definition of a peace officer, a peace officer is every single one of us. We are all peace officers because we're enforcing the peace at all times. We're supposed to be maintaining the peace. In fact, for a police officer or an RCMP or a sheriff to become your equal, they have to remove their badge and step out out from behind their office. Otherwise, they are subservient to you. And you can order them around. You can come to the defense of a fellow human being and walk up to police and just say, Hey, by what authority are you attacking this man? What is your claim? Which is something, yeah, which is something we have to really stop being fearful of doing. We have to stop being scared of them. That's when I knew I had things right because I actually stopped being scared, and that goes right back to biblical references in the Bible and stuff like that. About uh, when you know who you are, you understand the name, and you know what your role is here. The fear just melts away, and it really does. It's actually it's it's even more crazy than your head might explode by the time you realize everything that's going on. It's like holy shit! Like this just this stuff just gets more and more real as you go and it's unbelievable yeah, now, well, the, the self-awareness you start to you start to have when you when you get to these higher levels we're so, going to get back to the the biblical references in a bit but i'd like to understand your knowledge of international laws a little bit more what yep. do you have to say on on that subject well international laws if you uh, basically what is, what is a nation right that's what inter international is it's just a group of nations that have come together so what what's a nation and a nation is not a physical landmass. A nation is uh, an administrative organization, and that's what Canada is. Canada doesn't physically exist, not on this landmass. It's like uh, where you see a map and you see the landmass of Canada, and it's got Canada written over top of it. That's no different than looking at a sales territory map for Coca-Cola for this landmass. It's a sales territory. Well, the only, there- the only Canadians are the government agents. Yes, Agents of the government of Canada. So what they've tried to do, technically speaking, they do have jurisdiction and matters to enforce uh, common law and whatnot. Like we do have to have an organizational structure in place, but they're doing so de facto. So I never want to dismiss the entire. You're not required to answer to anybody. I mean, yeah, you better believe you're going to be answering for it if you harm somebody. Uh, that's where that that delusion is going to melt away. Is you don't think you have to answer for anything as soon as you harm somebody. But uh, then, yeah, inter international. Um, I mean, I think there's a Supreme Court case uh, here in Canada. I, I don't have it with me, and I know somebody that does have it where I think five five natives in northern Alberta or something like that just got together and decided they are going to start their own nation. So they gave the government notice of that, as far as I'm aware, and the government took them to court, and they lost. And the, the court said, no, they can start their own new nation. Anyone can. Because once you realize who you are, your legal person is your own nation. Your registration now with that, the government is simply their acknowledgement that you exist. It doesn't put you under their authority at all. It's like basically you're now uh, two two nations who now have a trade relationship with one another. That's all okay, it is. Now here's another here's another question though. Do you know about treaties and what treaties are? Like uh, like yeah, things that started before. Yeah, 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 yeah. The treaty is basically like the trust corpus of of an agreement between you and any other organization. We have a treaty together. We have a contract. We have a business relationship. This is how we're going to operate ourselves. Okay. Um, what of the idea that whatever we're doing now? This is just me playing. You know, just just playing. What of the fact that say the Indians were here first, and we have no right to start a nation on land that's already theirs? That the corporations decided to take hostage. Do you see my train of thought there? Or do I have to? I do, and that'll go back to the whole land claim stuff and the fact that, yeah, the government never did live up to all the stuff that they said they were going to do and all their money's being held in some escrow trust account, you know, for all the resources and the whole nine yards. They're being screwed over. Here's the problem with that. Um, technically speaking, we are all, anyone who's been who's born on this land is now a native of the landmass that is commonly referred to as Canada. We all have a claim to what to wherever we're born. Right, we like uh, like. Right. What are they going to do? Tell me to go back home because my family's been here for for six generations. Like it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry, it's wishful thinking, but um, so we all have a claim to everything that's going on. The problem is, if the government of Canada, uh, the corporation, which is what the British North America Act created, if the Crown Corporation of Canada 
made a deal with these people, then these people have to go after Canada to enforce that. That's not our that's not our problem. It's not our responsibility. That's their problem and their responsibility. And they're starting to do that now. I think down in Ontario and the Squamish out in BC, they're taking back what's there. 